Hi friends. In a previous tutorial on machine learning and its types, we briefly discussed two very popular machine learning algorithms: supervised learning and unsupervised learning. In this tutorial, we'll elaborate more about these two learning techniques and how they differ in learning. If you have not watched our tutorial on machine learning, please watch that first and then come back to this lecture. In that tutorial we have talked about a very important topic that is labeled data and unlabeled data which sets foundation for supervised and unsupervised machine learning techniques. Now let's discuss supervised and unsupervised learning techniques of machine learning one by one. Let's first understand supervised learning algorithm. Now you know from previous tutorial that labeled data is that type of data which has target variable provided. Let's carefully look at this data set. It displays mindset of a reader towards a book based on some factors like whether the author is known or unknown, what is the genre, and whether it's a short book or a long book. In this table, last column holds the action taken by the reader on previous books, which is also called label column or target column. It shows the action record of the reader for each book, technically speaking for each data point. Now you have enough information to define supervised learning. It is that category of machine learning algorithms in which training of machines or systems is done using labeled data or data which have target variables. In such a learning, a machine learning model maps input variable say x to an output variable say y using some mapping function. y equals to function of x. Here f is some mapping function which takes input x and produces output y. We also call mapping function as hypothesis. The basic aim of this type of learning is to approximate a mapping function so that when there is a new input data, then the corresponding output variable can be predicted. You can say, when dataset has target variable to which we map input data using some mapping function or hypothesis, then it is supervised learning. Let us understand it with the help of an example. Suppose there is a basket filled with some fruits and your job is to arrange the same type of fruits at one place. Also, let's assume that the fruits are apple, banana, mango and grapes. How will you solve this problem? You find it very easy. Yeah, it is a very easy task if you already know from your previous experience about the correct category a particular fruit belongs. Here the previous experience or work is called as training data in data mining terminology. Therefore, we can say that supervised learning model learns from the training data. This is because it has a response variable or target variable attached, which says that if some fruit has so and so features that it can be a banana, and similarly for other fruits. This type of information is extracted from the data that is used to train the model. Now let's take another example. Let's say a software company is developing a software for a pharmaceutical company which will predict whether a suspected patient is infected from a certain disease or not. What approach you think the developers of the software company should pursue? It is not as simple as previous problem, right? No doubt, input data to such a software will be physical details of the patient. These details can be height, weight, temperature of the patient, blood pressure index, heartbeat rate, sugar level, etc. Now based on previous reports and observations, software developers will decide which symptoms really affect the particular disease. Let's say in this case there are temperature, blood pressure, heart rate and sugar level. This is called data analysis. Now after extracting important symptoms, developers will build a model with two target variables whether a person is infected from a disease or not. In this case as well, you can see we are having training data which will be mapped towards target data for each data point and we will get a finally evolved trained model or mapping function which can be used for new suspected patients. From these two illustrations we can understand it is called supervised learning because of the process of learning from the training data set. It can be thought of a teacher who is supervising the entire learning process. Thus, the learning algorithm iteratively makes predictions on the training data 
and is corrected by the teacher and the learning stops when the algorithm achieves an acceptable level of performance or the desired accuracy accuracy of supervised learning algorithms is measured either by confusion matrix if the problem is a classification problem or by r square value in case of a regression problem we have discussed about regression and classification categories of supervised learning algorithms in detail in previous tutorial please watch that for better understanding of these two terms some of the supervised learning algorithms are support vector machine linear regression and decision tree etc now let's discuss another learning technique that is unsupervised learning unsupervised learning is used when training data is unlabeled data which means where only the input data is present and no corresponding output variables there you can say that if the data set is not having any target variable then you will have to apply unsupervised learning the main aim of unsupervised learning is to model the distribution in the data in order to learn more about the data these algorithms are used to make group of unsorted information as per their features like similarities patterns without any target values in unsupervised learning algorithms try to find out hidden patterns or knowledge which can lead to final decisions let's consider the same example of identifying similar type of fruits from a bucket to understand it better this time assume that you have no information about these fruits beforehand it's the first time the fruits are being seen or discovered now how can you group similar type of fruits without any prior knowledge would you like to make a guess you can try something like this first you can select any physical characteristic of the fruits suppose color and you can arrange them on the basis of the color the groups will be something like this there will be a red color group which consists of apple and grapes and a yellow color group will have mango and bananas now again you have two groups for further classification you can take another physical character say size and because we have considered a simple problem we can reach to final stage of classification within this sorting now there will be four groups of similar fruits based on color and size like this apple of red color and big size grapes of red color but small size bananas of yellow color and big size mango of yellow color but small size in this problem you would have noticed that we were not given any information about the type of fruits we have categorized them in similar groups after identifying a common pattern in a group that's how unsupervised learning algorithm works it helps in finding hidden pattern in the training data let's consider another problem which can be solved using unsupervised learning suppose ssp of a city is getting too much pressure from high authorities to solve the issue of high crime rate so that crimes in the city are minimized but ssp finds that police personnel available in the city are less as compared to size and population of the city so he has to think of an optimistic approach which can help him to reduce the crime rate can you think of a solution to help the ssp Won't it be useful to collect historical data of all previous years crimes in the city and identify the pattern in them? It will be beneficial to identify those areas which have highest crime rate. By using clustering technique, cluster of crimes can be created with respect to city areas. After getting clusters within the city, SSP can target for clusters which have high crime rates and start controlling from those clusters and then ultimately he can reduce the overall crime rate in the city with limited police personnel and resources similarly most of the online frauds have a pattern which can also be prevented by finding those patterns from previous data so in this example as well we do not have any target variable but we can solve the problem by analyzing grouping and by identifying hidden patterns in the available information hope these two illustrations would have cleared your concepts about unsupervised learning it is called unsupervised because there is no correct answer attached to the data or there is no such teacher like supervised learning algorithms are left to their own to discover and present the hidden useful structure in the data 
Accuracy measure of unsupervised learning algorithms depends upon type of algorithms. For example, clustering uses the ratio how each data point is similar to its cluster versus how different from other cluster. Higher value is considered good and lower value is considered bad. While recommendation systems use mean average precision which is essentially how well the recommendations are. We will discuss these methods of accuracy measurement while implementing the algorithms. Some of the unsupervised learning algorithms are k-means clustering, principal component analysis and singular value decomposition etc. Hope that previous illustrations would have enhanced your knowledge of supervised and unsupervised learning algorithms. Now let's draw a table with point-wise difference between the two. Supervised learning uses known or labeled data, while unsupervised learning uses unlabeled data. Supervised learning is more complex in comparison to unsupervised learning. Supervised learning uses offline analysis, while unsupervised learning uses real-time analysis of data. In supervised learning, number of classes or target variables are known, but in unsupervised learning, target classes are not present. Results of supervised learning are more accurate and re reliable in comparison to unsupervised learning. This is because of the presence of target variable in training data in case of supervised learning. Thanks for watching the tutorial. If you find this tutorial useful, please share it with your friends. You can let us know about your questions and comments in the comment section. If you like this content, do not forget to subscribe our channel so that you do not miss any new tutorial.